uh, we'll start with this are different kinds of questions which are happening today. New typologies. So the first thing is, is a visual, uh, I would say visual ability based questions rather than cognitive based questions. And, and in design, these kind of questions are extremely, extremely uh, significant because they are up, they happen. I mean, you get a lot of these typologies. That's why right. any design exam, let it be architectural, let it be any product based design also. So uh, this is the first one where you're given a 3D image of some glasses which are organized, of which some are empty and some glasses are full. What is suggested is if the full glasses are half filled into certain empty glasses, which, I mean, not which, but how many glasses will remain empty in the given set? So it's a very simple question. Uh, you have to first count the number of total number of glasses, then count the total number of full glasses, multiply it by two, because if you're fill, half filling the uh, full glasses into other empty glasses, uh, you will get uh, a double, double the number of classes which are full right now. So it's pretty simple, but the complicated issue in this kind of question is counting the number of total number of classes because the 3D geometry figure appears to be very, way more complex because the classes are organized in an irregular manner. Now the method, easier method to do is follow on one grid. So I'm just drawing this grid. So this will be a much easier method to for counting the glasses. So, you know, uh, it, is, it is much easier to count the classes like this by following that grid or the perpendicular grid also is possible, but then there are a lot of numbers. So if I draw a perpendicular grid, they are not organized evenly. There are certain classes which are moving uh, around that grid. So that's why I won't take that kind of grid, this grid I won't be taking. Instead, I will take a perpendicular grid. So, uh, okay, people have started to answer. I haven't seen that, I'm sorry. Okay, okay. So, so, here, uh, Tanisha and Kritika, your answers are correct. That's fine. Uh, all your answers are correct. Here, Tanisha and Kritika, whosoever is answered. Uh, okay. Uh, Anya, Ananya, uh, Pant, your answers are also correct. Well, uh, your answer is wrong. Manshika and Neil, your answers are correct. Parth, your answer is wrong. Okay. So can anybody tell me the total number of glasses which are seen in this visual image? 24. Okay. It's 24. So 24 is the total number. Out of that, seven glasses are filled. When these seven glasses 
uh, sorry, when the water of the seven glasses is half filled into certain empty glasses, the total number of filled glasses will be 14. So when these when the water is half filled into other empty glass, the total number of filled glasses after that time will be 14. So 24 was the total, uh, total number of glasses minus 14 gives you 10. So after that half filling is done, there will be 10 empty glasses. So that's why whosoever is given 10 as the answer, their answer is correct. In this kind of question, the uh, difficult thing or rather the confusing thing is always the counting of number of glasses because you are seeing all these 3D lines overlapping with each yeah. other. That's where please try and follow or make your own, if, if you are not comfortable with this method, make your own follow, make your own method to follow this kind of uh, counting, uh, grid counting. Uh, don't go with the longer options. Don't go with these kind of longer thing because there you have a tendency to count uh, twice one glass. So, yeah. Uh, or just, uh, or if you're comfortable with directly counting, you can just jump there. That's fine. That is up to you. That is your call. Any doubts? Any questions here? All right, take it. We go to the next one then. So this is a perspective-based uh, question where there is a, I don't know if you're able to see, but there's a cat sitting on a wall. You can see here, is a cat sitting on the wall. So what you have to do is you have to identify the correct view uh, or the correct option, sorry, which shows the perspective from the cat's point of view, not the human perspective, but the perspective from the cat's point of view, which is sitting on this wall. Can anybody, first question is, before you heed to the answer, can anybody suggest which is the perspective which is clearly wrong? Which, is, which are the two options which are clearly long and which are not in perspective? Candy. Which one? B and D, Bombay and Delhi. B and D, no, one is correct. B is right. I agree with B, but D is in perspective. D perspective may hai. D may kya problem hai? How can B come because the, the no, height no. of the. I'm saying the perspective is wrong. That's what I'm saying. B may I agree. There is no perspective only, it's an elevation. But Okay, I may I must understand. Okay. I'm saying B is an elevation. What you what is B? It's an elevation, it's not a perspective. So that's what I'm saying. So uh, I don't know, somebody said here K okay, B is not in perspective, which I agree. So clearly the option B is wrong because it's not in perspective at all. Is there any other option which is not in perspective and which is not possible only? Okay, perspective method yet drawing hai. Can anybody suggest? A. A. Very true. A is also not in perspective. Now, how did I came to know about that is, if you look at the ground line, it's horizontal. There is no setback like what is happening in C or what is happening in option D or even the similar thing like we see in option A, there is no setback here, nor there is any setback happening on the top because, of course, in the option B, we see both the roofs, you know, they are of different heights. So in option B, clearly it should be the case, but it's not happening. Or at least the ground line is not shifting. So I will say option A and B are something which is not possible. That's where I negate both the options. Now, then after that, after negating option A and B, I'm left with C and D. So which, what is the difference between C and D is my first question. This part, which you see in the middle, This edge which you see in the middle is what is different between C and D. Now, how do you determine which is the correct option? Is by simply placing with reference to that, to that edge, which is here, with reference to this edge, 
which is here how is the class how is the cat's uh, position like so what i will do is i will draw a vertical from here i'll then draw a horizontal now if you look at clearly that horizontal comes along this facade itself so will the cat be able to see this facade or will it not be able to see that facade If somebody's eye position is is in line with an edge, will you be able to see that edge, or will you not be able to see that edge? <coughs> Can anybody suggest? You know, or you don't know? I don't know. Okay, so people have answered. I think the cat will not be able to see the middle part. Yeah, they won't be able to see the see that uh, see that wall, and that's why in, in op if the cat's position was somewhere here. Sorry, I'm just I just use a different color. Yeah, if if the cat's position was somewhere uh, around this edge, then it will be option D. Then option D would have been possible. But in this case, the cat position is in alignment with the uh, with that edge, and that's why I will say option C is the correct one, and option D is also wrong. Is that clear? Yes. In perspective, whenever you are shown something like this, please please remember to place the position of the object or the eye level of the object with reference to edges. Like in this case, I did with reference to the horizontal edge, which is this edge, which is seen here. In some cases, you might want to take the vertical edges also. That is also possible. So I, you know, I might want to see this edge. So with reference to the height, I might be required to see these, these edges also. So please, uh, I mean, please check based on the option, what edge are you required to see? So based on that conclusion, I will say C is the correct one and option A and B are clearly not possible. I negated that first and then option D is only possible if the catch position was further, you know, towards the end of the wall. Is that clear? Okay. So here there is some kind of pattern which this group, there's a group of images or group of tiles which are following some kind of pattern. And there is a tile missing in the middle. In the middle, uh, in the middle row, uh, sorry, in the, uh, yeah, in the middle row, there is one, uh, there's one tile which is missing. What you have to find is based on the pattern that is followed across the whole, tile arrangement, what will come in that missing tile pattern? <coughs> so if I go for what is happening around, there are dots which are getting enlarged here, further gets enlarged here, further gets enlarged here, the dots are getting bigger, bigger, bigger. Here also they are getting bigger. Here, if you look at the position, from this to this, they, the dots have grown even bigger. So that's why this white voids, which are seen here, they are getting even smaller. Here, these voids get even smaller. Here, the dots get even bigger. Here, the dots are getting even bigger than what, what it was seen here. And that's why certain dots, white dots, which are there here, they are gone. And then uh, only certain dots that are there, which are, uh, I mean, only certain, there are only certain dots which will remain. But along with that, if you look at this position after this, what is happening, the dots are now shrinking. After growing up, they are now shrinking back. So that's where the void is becoming the white color, void, I mean white color. The white color is, has shifted from more number of white to less number of white dots here. So if I were to say, okay, okay, between these two, what will be the correct option? What I, what I will look for is just very simple thing. I will look for the position of one, two, three, four. And yeah, I, if I, even if I look at the one, two, three, four position, I will be able to get the correct answer. 
and of course the sizes. So the size of the black void needs to be between the bigger ones, which is this, and the smaller ones, is which is this. So can anybody suggest A, B, C, D? Is me se kaun sa aega? Also the position of the white and the size of the white, considering both the things. So if you look at it, these three are in line. There is one in line at the bottom and there's one in line at the top. These three dots are in line, one here and one here. Two here, I would put it that way because one here, but I will say one here, one here and three in the middle. So anybody, any guesses, which one would it be? A, A option. Option A, three here, one here, one here, and then one small thing you are seeing peeping along the edge. B is not possible because the position of the white dots here versus the position of the white dots here, I mean, sorry, the size of the white dots here versus the size of the white dots here, they are the same. So I will say option A is the correct one. Is there any doubts, any questions here? No, ma'am. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know. Have it? Have we tried? Uh, have we tried doing any font-based questions earlier? Yeah, this is the first one that you're trying. First one. Okay. So, okay. In case, uh, then I will just give you a brief introduction of when fonts are involved. What you should be looking at. There are certain attributes. Whenever font-based questions are asked, is to look for. I'll just mark it here so it's easier for you. So look for this edge. How is that edge ending? How does it start? When curves are involved, how does this edge respond to the curve? Is it a tangent? Is it a straight horizontal? Is it a straight vertical? What happens? It is also important to look at the thickness of the letters. What happens was in this thickness versus in this thickness, in this thickness versus in this thickness? What is the difference between the horizontal and the vertical thicknesses? It's very significant to note. Once you are done this, it is also important to note if the word if the letters are vertical or are they in, at some angle, maybe in italics, or are they in other angle also? So in most of the cases, the letter which will be given to you would be along the vertical edge itself. After that, you have to look for these attributes, the thickness uh, of the lines, if it is constant, if it is changing, if it is, uh, uh, if it is very thin also. The next thing would be looking at the edges, the top and the bottom edge and the last thing would be the orientation, vertical, horizontal, angle, whatever. So in this case, what you have to find is this is some uh, this is a letter written in one family font. This is one family fa font style. The you are given the letter R written written in four different font styles. You have to find which font style belongs to the font style that is that you are able to see on the top. Uh, word that is there. I think it is C option. Okay. Anybody who wants to counter that or anybody with a different option? An A. Option A. Option A or C may farak hai. What is the difference between A and C? Thickness. Well, it's option C. It's option C. Okay. A and C may, the difference is this and this. So if I look at this versus this in option A and C, 
I will say option C is the correct one because I will look for that not which is happening. That not happens in the first letter of the word N, no, which is here. And in that letter, I, what I see is there is a vertical and then the not curve happens. Here also there is a vertical or, or some horizontal line or sorry, at, uh, an angular line. And then the curve happens. In option A, it's all curvy. It's all curvy in option A, and that's why I say option A is not possible. B and C are clear, uh, sorry, B and B are clearly out of question because they are from they're clearly from a different font family. And the last thing which I will say is the perpendicular, which happens here. In option A, the end is something problematic for me because it's saying vertical. Uh, here it, it should have been at some angle, but it's showing vertical. So that's why I will say I'm not sure of option A. But then I go when I look at that not thing which is happening here, I will say option C is the correct one. Clear. So whenever font families are involved, please look at even these knots. I forgot to miss uh, say that, but even these knots are important or even these dots which happen floating around, even they become important many a times. Is that clear? Oh, tick. So, there is a definition of what is an interactive space, which is given here. So what is an interactive space? It's a common space between uh, entities. It's a common space between entities, different entities. It offers scope for communication between these entities. And uh, uh, so basically an interactive space is something which is common between entities and it offers some kind of scope of communication. And in the figure that you are given here, uh, it's, it's a plan of a house and the opening which is there, it's the door. It's the place where the door of the house comes. And you have to assume that the house doesn't have any windows. So it's a door only which is allowing you to come out, come in and look out look outside or do anything. So of the given clusters, different five clusters which are given, you have to find, uh, you have to arrange these cl clusters based on the potential for interactivity and communication within the cluster. So amongst these, I will ask the first question, which is the least interactive? And this is an ascending order. So which is the least interactive cluster? Five. Five, okay. Any other question? Any Anybody else who wants to counter this? Everybody agree five is the least interactive cluster? The hint is look at the way the doorways or the opening which is there. Look at the way the opening is oriented. Is option five the least interactive? Can anybody agree, disagree? No. Ma'am, so the interaction is based on how close the uh, clusters are or uh, how uh, the opening is related to all the clusters. What it is written, I will say go back to the definition. What is written in the definition? An interactive space is a common space between entities. It offers scope for communication between those entities. Then um, I think one, one is the uh, most One is the least interactive. Yeah. <laughs> one is the least interactive because in five, I see this. You see this part? There's some scope of interaction in five. 
all the clusters are looking out. They're looking in different orientation, but there is some possibility of interaction here. In option one, if I start drawing the way the line is, I mean, the, sorry, the way the opening is oriented, there is no space where these lines interact with each other. There is literally no space where they communicate with each other. In five, at least there is some possibility here. So I will say option one will come first. It's the least interactive. Then which one will come? Five, two, three, four. Five, three, either of them, which one will come? Five. Okay. So if I look at option three, and I start drawing those lines. Okay, there is one possibility here, but then this is also happening. So there is a larger possibility happening here. At least three cluster are talking to each other in option three. So I will say, so what I will say is, okay, next one, five will come. After five, Number three, obviously. <laughs> then four or two, which one will come? Out of four or two, which is the most interactive? Four and two. Four. Four, okay. So let's start drawing these lines again. One, two, three. So I'm getting some kind of interactive space here. This will come, this comes, and this comes. So I'm saying four clusters are interactive and then there is something happening from this side here also. In number two, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven. I will say number two is the one with the lead, with the maximum, maximum interaction possibility, which comes at the end. Four comes in the middle. And the correct sequence is one, five, three, four, two, which is uh, option D. Is this clear? Yes. Yes. In this case, uh, whenever you are given some definition, one second. Whenever you are given some definition as a part of the question, please refer to the definition and don't add anything outside the definition. Here the definition is talking of some common space and some uh, possibility of communication. So just stick to these two aspects. Don't think outside the box besides this. Only in cases when the definition is given, otherwise, you have to use your vocab, your own vocabulary. Okay. Any questions anybody has here? No. Okay. This is a pretty easy one. So here you are given this figure. And there are certain differences between the two uh, between the two images that, that are given to you. Both the images are similar; they are not same. Uh, so you have to find the differences that are there between the two images. The number of differences that are there between uh, the two images which are given. Take. Two to five minutes, not more than that. If possible, two minutes. Try searching those. I think it is six. I think it is six.
All right. Let's see that people have been saying six. Some people have been saying eight. So let's just start marking. We'll start from top to bottom. So there's a knot here. Sorry. There's a knot here. There is a missing knot here. So that is one difference. Anything on the top? One, two, three, four, and here also there is nothing. There's a mustache which is missing here. There's a mustache which is missing here. The color of that fabric which the person is wearing here versus here. The mustache, everything else seems uh, fine for now. Okay. Then let's look at the container. So one container, orange, blue, green, blue, one, two, three, four, four bodies, same color, no problem. This container also seems fine. This container also seems fine. There are lines which are missing here, if you see, versus there are lines here. The pattern of the lines which is seen here versus the pattern of the lines which is seen here is different. The cookie is one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, there is no problem there. Uh, okay, the number of cookies are fine, but the basket color, which you see here, versus which you see here, it's different. The container is fine. This container, this container is fine. The rim of the container of this container versus this container is different. There's a missing equipment which is seen here, which you can see here. So these, this is again a difference. This is okay. This green container is fine. The terracotta brown container is fine. The dark brown is also fine, I think. So far, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight is the correct one. Please remember in these kind of questions, you have to go element by element by element by element like I did. Don't do it randomly. Please follow a systematic method. So you have to go by element. So I started with that ba uh, banana thing on top. Then I looked at all the all these hanging things which were happening. I observed them. Then I came slowly came down at the bottom and then I went from container to container to container to container. It doesn't take, take much of your time. It might take a minute more than randomly looking at things, but you will be finishing it off systematically and you won't be repeating your uh, past differences because these are online exams. So the question will be on the screen. You won't have any marking thing with you. So do it systematically that way. Okay. So correct option is answer eight. Okay. Somebody said option 10. I mean option, uh, the answer D. I don't know. Who is that? Uh, Janvi. Actually, I got wrong answer. That's why. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, but the correct answer is here eight. But Mr. Guy returned it. Huh? Mr. Guy returned it. Oh, okay. So this is an egg or a person who is walking and you have to identify the correct sequence of a human walk. So these are different positions of which are a part of a larger walking person and you have to arrange the sequence. This is not in a sequence, please remember that, but we have to arrange this sequence. Uh, so it appears that the person is walking.
I think it is B option. Okay, uh, Harini, Mishti, Tanisha, your answers are correct. Janvi, Neil, your answer is correct. Pant, your answer is correct. Yeah, that's right. The option is, the correct one is uh, answer option B. Why? Because we start with a stable leg first. We start with a stable foot first. Then the other foot is raised. It goes in the, it goes in the front first. The green foot goes in the far front first. Then it becomes stable. Meanwhile, when it stay, becomes stable, the other foot has to be raised. And then it comes ahead forward. So it's literally in this direction. Four, three, two, and one. The correct one is option B. And most of you have got it correct. It's a good thing. All right, any questions anybody has here? All right. So here you are given a, a horse with a man sitting on top profile. And uh, you're supposed to guess which is the bone correct position of the bone linkages of the horse at the place where that red dot is placed. So the red dot is showing a bone linkage position. And you have to find the subsequent bone linkage position which follows that red dot along the leg. So what will be the bone linkage position along this starting from the red dot till the leg? Yeah, here, Janvi, uh, here, here, Janvi. Yeah, only the two of yours answers are correct. And Harini's. Uh, Neil, Tanisha, Navya, Vanshika, your answers are wrong. Part, your answer is correct. Pant, your, Pant, Ananya, your answers are wrong. Ritika, your answer is correct. Vanshika, your answer is correct. Shreya, your answer is wrong. Okay. Pal, your answer is wrong. Okay, so the correct figure that will come here will be somewhat like this, which is option A. There has to be a bone joint here, which linkage links to this part. This goes further down to this joint, which comes here, and then further down at the end here. So option A is the correct one. I think this was, there's no doubt here, I mean. This is basic anatomy, so I, there is no discussion possible, but option A is the correct one. 
yeah here you are given a truck which is pulling a load and there are number of pulleys that are involved in that system in the system there are n number of pulleys which are part of it and uh, what you have to suggest is uh, for uh, in order for the load to move up by 8 meters how much has the truck how much does the truck has to move ahead the height of the load has to be at 8 meters it has to be lifted by 8 meters Here, Vanshika, Tanisha, your answers are correct. Janvi, your answer is correct. the correct answer here is option a8 why because if you look at closely the position or the uh, rather the diameters of the pulley the diameter of the pulley are not changing they are same if there was some change in the diameter of the pulley only then the, uh, the distance of the truck might be less or might be more than 8 meters since all the pulleys are of the same diameter how much ever the truck moves ahead in this direction is uh, the amount of length the or amount of uh, height at which the load will be moving upward so if the truck moves by 8 meters only then the load will reach at a height of 8 meters so whenever pulley questions are involved please don't blindly write the answer instead look at the diameter of the pulley that is given if the pulley diameter is the same then whatever is the horizontal or the vertical distance uh, so will be the subsequent load distance or height distance of the load if there is change in diameter only then that equation changes okay. yeah we will end the session here any questions anybody has was this simple what is was it difficult to answer